What's up, everybody? This is Mo. Today, we're going to talk about some news tidbits. I know that's instantly boring, and you're probably going to click off right there. But believe me, I am probably not going to bring anything new to the table, but you're talking to me, so just stick around. All right, so right now, we're going to go ahead and start off with the whole T-Series versus PewDiePie drama. So far, as of 7.26 a.m. Central Standard Time in America... PewDiePie is up by 10,000 plus, almost 11,000. And quite frankly, this is great because I really do feel that the the honor of 100 million subs belongs to a content creator and not a corporation. I'm sure T-Series pumps out some decent content and all that, but honestly, you know... If you're going to have content, it might as well just be for everybody. As much as I have nothing against India whatsoever, T-Series essentially is just pumping out content for India. Because, let's face it, I don't really think that... Uh, uh, well, up until this whole uh, PewDiePie versus T-Series fight, I never knew that T-Series even existed. Now, they're huge in India, go figure, but at the end of the day... Really, T-Series is just for people in India. It's not for everybody. PewDiePie, however, pumps out content that's for everybody. And I really do feel that uh, because of that, he is much, much more deserving of the title of, of first content creator to get 100 million. Uh, I'm sure T-Series will do great in the long run, but honestly, it's not good overall for YouTube. I mean, for crying out loud, look at the fucking rewind from just earlier last year. It was just aggravating. I mean, what what is John Oliver and the dude from uh, uh, the dude from uh, 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 fucking Daily Show? What are they doing on here? They're not they're not YouTube creators. They have no business being on here. They have no business being even associated with YouTube. No, I don't think that they shouldn't be able to put their their content out there, sure, but let's stop pretending that John Oliver has been around the, the, since the hard days of being a YouTube content creator because he's not. But of course, this is just my opinion. I'm not really a huge fan of his show and quite frankly, I think more people have done much better when it comes to uh, political commentary and all that. John Oliver's just kind of boring. But, you know, that's just besides the point, and we're not even focusing on that. But right now, I am watching Social Blade's official YouTube page, and they've been live streaming the fight between T-Series and PewDiePie for quite some time now. As you can see right here, 106966, blah, blah, blah. But basically... PewDiePie is 10 G's up on T-Series, and I'm really, really happy that's happening, because quite frankly, uh, PewDiePie deserves it. All, throughout all the bullshit, YouTube completely uh, abandoning him, uh, it's it's really a shame. Like, uh, it's, it's really a shame that this has happened the way it is, because uh, YouTube it really has no loyalty to its content creators whatsoever, uh, despite the fact, despite the fact that PewDiePie has made the millions and millions of dollars, it, it's it seems like they don't care. They they do care about the millions of dollars that the corporations will give to them, which really kind of freaks me out because, you know, a content creator can say something really fucking dumb. And influence people to say stupid shit. But that's not really that big of a deal. When a corporation does something stupid, it ends up having negative effects on the people who work for them. And sometimes if you're huge, like say Enron or or any other failed business, you know, people lose their jobs. Prices skyrocket on this and that. Uh, stupidity from a corporation costs everyone stupidity from a youtuber costs no one anything and quite frankly with all the uh, bullshit controversy surrounding pewdiepie especially with the recent shooting uh that he got uh, all all sorts of un undue blame for i mean that's just sad but anyway we're going to go ahead and move on from that if you haven't done it already go ahead and subscribe to pewdiepie and go check out uh, Social Blade's YouTube channel right here. Links will be in the description. And now we're going to go ahead and talk about another thing that's been really pissing me off lately. Uh, everyone's flipping shit over the Outer Worlds going exclusive on Epic Games when we're on the PC. See? 
I have no problems with this whatsoever. I think Epic Games has a great freaking shop. I ha I think they have a great freaking philosophy. I think we all end up benefiting in the long run from having huge titles go exclusive to another app launcher. Because for crying out loud, Steam has been the king, has been top freaking tier for years and years and years. And we all saw this coming. Eventually, we were going to end up seeing another digital distribution platform take the number one slot. And honestly, I feel that Epic Games are, is about to be poised to take that number one slot all, out of Steam. And quite frankly, Steam kind of deserves it with them focusing exclusively on digital distribution instead of well they were a game studio and we wanted more games from them we wanted half-life 3 we wanted more stuff in the portal universe and in left for dead uh but we never got that because they decided to go the digital distribution route primarily and i don't have a problem with that whatsoever there's nothing really that i, I i'm bitching about I feel that the negativity that Epic Games has been getting lately has been really undue. Uh, for instance, let's go ahead and scroll down here. Everyone disliked that. With the game's death, the thread prophecy is severed. Restore to save game to restore the weave of fate or persist in the doomed world you have created. And this is Obsidian, Epic Games, Out of Worlds. I mean, really get fucked. Here's another one. Uh... Truth is, the game was rigged from the start. Blah, 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 blah. It wasn't fucking rigged. Quite frankly, I'm really happy that Epic Games is getting this, and I hope it does really well. I hope they do really well. With this being said, Epic Games gives more to the uh, the content creator, the, the, the game developer, than Steam does. And with them using the Unreal Engine, uh, they get to save a lot more on costs. And this is what we would probably call an independent small developer. If these small indie devs keep getting more and more money, they will be able to pump out more and more content. This will create an incentive for more smaller developers like Obsidian, uh, uh, like Megacrit, you know, the people who made Slay the Spire. This is great for them to get the money that they deserve so they can pay their staff and pump out content. This is fantastic. Hopefully there will not be any negative effects from that. Well, honestly, the only real negative effect that I'm seeing right now is that Steam's going to end up going from number one to number two. And if Steam doesn't get its shit together, it's going to end up deserving that second slot. And all power to Epic for them going number one. Fingers crossed that it goes that way. Let's go ahead and get to some more news. Shazam's coming out, and I'm really looking forward to this. I'm a huge fan of the Shazam comics and the Shazam uh, DC uh, cartoon movies that have been pumped out. And so far, it's got a 93 on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, I know what you're thinking. Rotten Tomatoes fucking sucks. But right now, as of this moment, uh, this this looks great. This looks great for superhero movies because we've gotten a lot of turds lately. Uh, Captain Marvel is probably not going to stand the test of time, mainly because the people who put it out have been overly political, and they've made the movie not... They, they've made superhero movies not fun to go to. Quite frankly, this mediocrity that we're, that, that we're constantly being told is excellence, that this is the standard that we're supposed to judge all of our superhero movies or uh, just content in general, I reject that. And... Uh, with the score of 93%, I can't wait to see this audience score. I bet it'll at least be in the 80s. So, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, Shazam does really, really well because the DC Universe needs it so bad. Uh, you want to talk about some turds. Uh, Suicide Squad sucked. I have not seen the uh, the Justice League movie at all. I have no reason to see the Aquaman movie despite Jason Momo. Uh, Mimosa, Mo, Mo Diggity, Mo Tastic, Mo Tackler, whatever the fuck his name is. You know, I haven't seen any of these shitty movies since after Batman v Superman. Uh, I, you know, fool me once, shame on you. You fooled me, can't you? Fooled again. <sighs> so anyway, I'm hoping Shazam does really well for them, and I'm hoping that everything goes really well, and I hope they're. Their movie franchise gets a big freaking boost. And that DC sort of realizes that 
being shitty isn't going to really get them anywhere. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the last little bit of news. Apex Legends Battle Pass is here. Here's how much, you know what, Apex Legends kind of sucks, okay? I'm, I'm sorry, but there's not really anything to Apex Legends. Oh, we got a new character, Octane. Oh, it's not going to kill Fortnite. Uh, right now we have squad base gaming and I think it's tons of fun, but it's not really that great. And honestly, there's just too many tryhards, uh, playing the game right now. And it's fun, but it's, it's not really that great. It's unless, unless we're getting more game modes and we're getting better characters and we're getting better this and that, unless the game pumps out some more content in the next six months, this game's going to die and go to the wayside because after, uh, the Fortnite free battle pass that everyone got the first two weeks, everyone was on this freaking game's nuts. Then when the freaking new season of Fortnite came out, they all went back to Fortnite. So unless apex legends has something else uh, coming down the pipeline, I don't feel like this game's going to stand the test of time. Well, anyway, Thanks for coming out. I do appreciate it. Go ahead and check me out at Mo Side Gaming on Twitter. Uh, check me out at twitch.tv slash modiggity. And check me out at youtube.com slash modiggity42. Thanks for coming out and thanks for watching my video. I really appreciate it, guys. Bye-bye.